Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. This is my first video of 2022 and I'm going to show you in this video how to attach the ZWO EAF electronic automatic focuser to the Skywatcher 120ED telescope that I recently acquired. So I have all the parts here. I have uh, the whole focuser that I bought from uh, First Light Optics. I then have an attachment that will help me attach it to the Skywatcher uh, uh, Esprit 120, because what comes in this box doesn't uh, actually work to do that. And I've also bought this, which will enable me to monitor the temperature through the evening and therefore see uh, if I need to change any of the uh, focusing through that. So stay tuned and I'll show you what's in the box of each of these. I'll then show you how I'm attaching it to the Esprit 120 ED and then how I set it up on the ASI Air Pro. And then hopefully I'll show you for the first night usage of it and see how good it is in actually getting some focusing working. So stay tuned and see how all of this works. So here are the three uh, elements that I bought to, uh, to do this with. So there's the ZWO EAF. And if we open this box, what we'll find inside is uh, instructions. So that'll help us go through it. We've got the uh, power connection cable. We've got the EAF itself. Then we've also got some uh, screws and screws to help there. This is the actual attachment, which we won't be using on this particular one because we're going to use the, the one that works for the Esprit 120. And then there's also a number of screws and washers. And again, we won't be using those, I don't think. And then there's a number of different attachments for the different sizes to fit uh, telescopes. So there's four of those and we'll see uh, which one of those we'll need to use for the Esprit 120. But because um, the attachment here doesn't work with the Esprit 120, what I bought here was the uh, Takahashi uh, additional uh, attachment. So if we just open that in this box, what we get is that attachment. So as you can see here, it's much broader, which is what we need. I'll need to attach this to it, so it's similar to, to that. Uh, and we'll do that in a moment. We've got another uh, attachment, that's probably for the Takahashi, so we probably won't use that. And then we've got some screws in here, uh, A, to attach these, but also the long ones, which will be used to actually work, because I think they're the 35 millimeter to attach to the Esprit 120. So that all comes in there. And then here is the additional element to do the uh, temperature gauging. So I'll put all these out on a separate page just to show you what the parts are. And I'll come back in a moment and show you once this is connected, how we're gonna start putting it onto the telescope. So here are all the uh, pieces that come with the EAF. So you've got uh, the kind of quick guide top right that tells you how to fit it. You have the EAF itself right in the center. And then on the bottom right, you've got the connecting cable. You're going to need to put to your uh, ASI, etc. The bracket at the bottom we're not going to be using, but we are going to be using one of those four couplings. Um, and on the left hand side, you've got some screws, some M4 and M5 screws. And you've also got some washers together with the M4 and M5 wrenches, some of which we'll be using. The key thing we're going to be using here is the uh, Telehashi uh, mounting bracket right there in the center, once we put that together. Uh, and we're not going to be using the uh, coupling uh, in the center there, but we are going to be using the long 35 mm screws on the left because those are suitable for the Esprit uh, 120. And on the top there, you can equally see I've got the device that will help me monitor the temperature through the night. So we're going to use some of these and I'll show you how that's done next. So these are all the elements I need. I've taken the Takahashi uh, and put it together. So it's now just screwing into there to bring the two brackets together. And then what I'll need to do is undo the focus knob on the telescope, find out which one of these fit. I don't need three of them, but one of them will fit. Then attach the EAF to that then attach the bracket to the EAF, EAF and then screw that down with the 35 millimeter screws that I've got here. And when all that's done, that should be the starting point to then uh, process and actually put the uh, 
autofocus uh, setting it up uh, with my ASI Air Pro. So these are all the pieces I need to do. So now I'll bring the telescope in and we'll give it a go. So here's the Skywatch uh, Esprit 120 ED telescope. And I've turned it upside down and here is the uh, focus elements. I've undone the lock, so uh, that's free. And I'm gonna be attaching it to this side, not the side that has the fine tuning knob, but the general knob. And I've actually put it right away in to start with. But if I then look in here to see where my uh, unscrewing element's gonna be, I'm gonna to have to take it slightly out. And there we go, so I'm just in the right place now. So I need the smaller of these wrenches. And what I'll now do is undo this screw to release the, uh, the focus knob. So that was it on there, so now it's off. There's the screw. Let's go and make sure we uh, keep that. So a bit of trial and error, I've discovered that this is the, uh, the one, I think it's the third of the uh, four in terms of uh, size of the aperture. So if I just fit that on, uh, I've got to make sure I made this as square so the, the flat piece is actually at the top here. So when I tighten this on, I'm tightening it onto a flat piece of surface. So I'll just tighten that down. There we go. Just put it, not fully yet. So that's that piece done. Now I just need to connect this to this piece and again, tighten the screws down. So again, we'll just put that in there. It wobbles a bit at the moment because we uh, haven't put on the bracket. But if I just tighten that, they are pretty tight already. Right, there we go. So it's hanging off a bit. Now what I need to do is take off the attaching screws that are on here. So if I just do that, that way I can then attach the bracket. So there's two on each side. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. So I've moved it so it's a little bit easier to see, hopefully. And uh, having now attached the EAF, I need to undo these screws here that I will end up locking my uh, bracket to. So I just need to unfasten these two screws and take them out before I then attach the bracket. So uh, let's just, this is the other one. There we go. So that's those two, which uh, again, we can store those, but we don't need those. So let's just put those away. So now we're just going to attach the uh, bracket to the EAF. So we just need to uh, put a washer on the outside here so we can get the first one attached in. Just find the center hole. Oh, there we go. That's okay. So that's that one in. Just do it gently to start with. We're going to uh, Tighten up when we've tightened up the uh, the other side. So again, we can just put this one in, just make sure they're caught. Yep. And now we can decide. All right. So now we need to put the longer 35 millimeter screws back in, or in, which we haven't had before. So again, let's put the let's put the washer on that. And. It should go in like that. And then likewise we'll get the other side ready. Just fiddly with the washer. Right, so now I'm just trying to see, we don't want to have anything too, I think that looks about yeah, that looks good. So we'll tighten these down. That looks good. So again, just do final tightening. Uh, 
and then likewise on here, which I think is pretty much where we're at. I think that looks good and safe. Okay, there we are. So that's it now attached. Now what I need to do is set it up uh, using my ASI Air Pro to calibrate it. So here we now have it uh, a bit more close up because I'm going to be showing you as the focus draw comes out and goes in as I calibrate it. And there are a number of steps you really need to do when you're calibrating it. So I've opened up my ASI Air Pro and on the right hand side here you can see the focus settings, which kind of go through various things from the autofocus down through to the kind of steps, whether they're small or large, etc. The first thing is it starts on a maximum step of uh, 60,000 and also on a minimum of zero. So we just want to make sure that we start at zero. And then what I then want to do is really take out the, the scope till its uh, maximum length. Now there are 60,000 steps actually available but I'm not going to go down to 60,000 steps. I think mine will end up at about uh, around 18,000. And what I'm doing here is you can see the uh, actual focus is starting to come out as I'm slightly moving it out bit by bit. I think I used, used, moved it out by about 6,000 and then out to about 8,000. But for some reason, the SIA Pro videoing on the right hand side took a while to catch up and eventually it did. And we'll see that in a second. But what I'm ultimately doing is just taking the, the draw of the focus out to the maximum, finding out what that is. So you can see I was at 8,000 and it's just coming up to that. And then I shall go on to further take it out. Um, I just want to do this as the very first time I'm using it. So I wanted to be careful using the EAF to make sure it was all working OK. Uh, and you can see it's fairly smooth, taking it out to 16,000 now. Uh, so happy with how that's progressing. And then I set it to take it out to 24,000, but I found that that was uh, literally a step too far because it only went out to about 18,000. So you can see it's going out, uh, continuing to uh, expand further out, but it's then going to stop. And we're just getting to that kind of point now. And there it goes. It's kind of stopped just over 18,000, I think 18,103. So even if I put 22,000 in, it won't recognize that because it's beyond, it's already got to its maximum limit. So uh, if I put around 18,000 in, that'll be roughly where I'm going to be. Now, this is what I first need to do is now set in my kind of maximum uh, steps. Instead of 60,000, I need now to set that to about 18,000. Um, and then I can get ready to do the rest of the calibration, which is mostly around setting the backlash. So I've got 18,100 there. So the next thing I really want to do is all I need to do is move the focus draw all the way back in. And this is the way I thought best to do it. Make it um, straightforward, get it back to zero and then take it out a few thousand. So it's a, a long way from being right up to uh, the, um, the minimum of focus, but not at the maximum either. And then I can do my testing to get to my backlash. Now backlash is all about when the kind of cogs within the focuser go round, initially they may not actually connect to one another and therefore you need a few turns, let's call it, a few movements before they do to connect and actually start moving the focuser itself and that's what's called backlash. And if you can work that out, then obviously when your software programmer, whether it's the ASI Air Pro or whichever, it will then know that the first few steps each time it's going to be moving it's likely to take a while for all those cogs to connect before it actually moves the focuser. So that's what we're really going to try and do here. So I'm slowly bringing it back to zero. And then once I've got it back to zero, I will go about doing this backlash. And the key thing I'm going to do when I do that is I'll take it out, I think uh, about four and a half thousand steps. So it's away from the uh, center. So here we are. So I'm just moving it out. I'm going to, I think I first move it out three and a half thousand, I take it out to four and a half thousand. And then what I'm going to look at very closely is on the left hand side, the actual very soft focuser wheel. Um, I've got to see if that moves when I move the steps 
very, very small. So you can see here I've got fine-tuned steps at 10 and uh, larger steps out at uh, maximum steps at uh, coarse steps, sorry, at 1,000. So I'm going to be using it at uh, just 10. So here we go. So I'm at 4,500 and now I'm pressing each time to move it down and see how long it takes. And you can see I'm, I've got my flashlight on to see when it actually moves. And it took me seven taps. So it took me seven times from 4,500 down to 4,430 before that little wheel moved. So that's my backlash. And now I can put that in. I can bring the uh, focus draw all the way into zero. But what I can do is I can change my uh, backlash now to 70 knowing that that's probably what will be the right number to engage when I'm moving the telescope. Actually, a day or two later, I moved that slightly up to about 90. I just gave it a little bit of leeway. So my backlash I now currently use is 90. Now here I am using it for the first time. So I've now moved back into the ASI Pro in the evening. I'm focusing on Alderman, the star in the center, which is what I would use uh, often to do my Batonov mask. But here I'm using the focuser, so I pressed on the AF button there, and this brought me into the auto focus routine. So if I press the go button on the right hand side, what it will then do is it will go off and try and find a suitable star that it's then going to use to do focusing on. And what you can see down the bottom here is you can see a range of steps from 16,371 up to 16,671. And what it's going to use is I've set my current current step movement of, I think, about 30. So it's going to move the focuser by 30 each time to see what happens to the star and see if we can get it more and more in focus. So it will start with the star being a bit defocused and then it will slowly focus it and focus it. So here's the first reading and you can see where it's 1620. And what it will do is it will keep taking images. Now it's down to 1358 and it will slowly build up a graph of the star as it decreases down and it will slowly do that. And uh, for some reason, I think some of the recording uh, paused a bit, but you'll see ultimately it will create a curve that you can see a few more steps coming in as it focuses closer and closer to the best possible focus it can get. And it's doing that by measuring the size of the star each time it decreases down and down. So here's a bit of a pause in the um, actual recording for some reason, but it was continuing to do that and moving it down further and further and creating that um, kind of uh, U-shaped graph to find out where the minimum positioning was and therefore the best focus for the star. And it did this pretty well. It took about, I think, three minutes in total to do the whole uh, exercise. Um, so when you're actually going to use it, and there you go, there you can see that's the actual uh, curve that it's created. You can see right down the bottom there, we've got some dots probably around the just uh, top of two, bottom of three. And then it will start kind of recalibrating it again and bringing it in to fine tune it to finish off the focus routine. And it will end up with a tiny little red dot down at the minimum level of focusing. And it takes a few whiles to do that. And you can see it's just finishing off, uh, taking the focus all the way out. And here it is now doing that kind of second routine where it's looking to find the minimum size of the star and finalize, already knowing roughly what the curve looks like. It's just bringing it down to the very minimum to get to the most focused star it possibly can. So I was really impressed with how quickly it did that. And then you can set it up with various routines, whether you want it done on every half hour, hour, two hours, whether it's a big temperature change or whether you're changing your target, you can do it for any of those. And we'll see in a second, there we are. So there's that red dot right down the bottom, which showed me my maximum, my best focus. So I then moved on to M33. I was in a plan mode. So I clicked onto that and then the telescope will slew across to M33. And the way I've got it set it up is it will now do a focus routine when it moves to a new target. So the first thing it will do once it gets to M33 here is it will start to do another focus routine. It gets to guiding and then I've just speeded this up because uh, it runs through fairly quickly, but it will quickly again find a star and then go through the routine of finding what is that kind of uh, 
uh, curve shape to get the uh, star to the minimum level. And you can see here when I speed it up, you can see more clearly how quickly it does that and how it quickly reaches a curve. Uh, this is four times quicker than it was in reality, but you can see it does that fairly quickly and you can see then it diffuses again. And then once it's satisfied of all of that, it goes back and finalizes the final point of the uh, focusing with that little red dot right down at the bottom. So that's it. So um, I was happy with that. There was a big, uh, looks like an aircraft going through that uh, particular trail. But then when I finally went through and took a picture of uh, M33, and here we can see it's just about to come up. We're doing the final few seconds. Um, this will show me pretty good how well focused I am. And now with the ASI Air Pro Plus, etc., you can actually do, uh, you can measure the stars, which is quite a good way of just testing how you're keeping in focus through the evening if you want to, by checking each image as it comes up with the, uh, the size of the stars in the image. And so here you can see, so we've just finished that imaging of M33 and it's just loading up that first image. So it just takes a few seconds to do that. So it's nearly there. And then uh, once it comes up, we can then just see how good a job it's done. And um, there it is. So there's M33. So using our tools, we can go in and uh, look at that. So we can um, press on uh, one of those things. Let's have a look in closely. That looks pretty sharp. So I think it's done a good job there in particular. Um, you can see you can press on the annotate to see what's in the image, which we know is M33. But then, as I said, you can also press on uh, detect a star. It takes a bit to calculate it, but there we are, 2.83. So that's pretty good. For me, that's in my location. I'm pretty happy with that as my, uh, as my um, focused star position. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, I hope that's... Uh, sorry, there was a bit of a delay on some of the uh, videoing, but I hope you got the uh, best of how I've done that. You can see going into the edge, I've really got good round stars with the Esprit 120. So I hope you enjoy that. And uh, I'll end up by showing you the final image that came out for M33. It really is a great galaxy to, to image because it's, uh, it's so big. You do get an awful lot in the frame. And you can see these stars coming out with the Esprit 120 is uh, really fantastic. So there it is. It's a great galaxy. And uh, I think using the ASI Air Pro again does make it pretty straightforward in capturing the images. And again, here you can see uh, another image that I was just running through. And you can see guiding that night, I was getting it pretty good, I think. So I was happy with how that went. And again, I can play around a little bit with the um, histogram just to bring out what the galaxy looks like, as you can see there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and let's uh, fingers crossed for a good night set of imaging and then when I process it I'll show you the final image. Mm -hmm.